Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. So, of, from the, the brand is from this brand heritage. It starts back in the nineteenth century, really. The company called Bullpit and Sons, mm. and you can see some of this stuff on Wikipedia and stuff anyway. Mm. But it starts with uh, Bullpit and Sons, and in nineteen thirty-one, they um, actually registered the Swan brand name, which mm. comes from the from the town Swansea, actually. Back in there, so so this year, obviously. Yeah, next year we've been 90 years old, as in Swan brand, but it's, it's the actual heritage is a lot longer. Right. And for us, you look back, and what's quite really intriguing about the brand is it's very innovative, the brand. It's always mm. been innovative in its, in its different forms. If, for instance, they invented the immersion element. So mm. it, it, in those days, putting electricity into water mm. was probably didn't seem like a good idea, <laughs> but they invented that, and obviously that spurred things like the, the invention of the electric kettle, the actual technology sold to Russell Hobbs back mm. in those days, mm. things like showers and all those different things. Yeah. The whole yeah. appliance, a lot of the appliance industry really evolved from that, from right. that sort of thing. And then you go through the the history back in then, the, the factory, it's very um, traditional metal bashing factory in central Birmingham. Mm. Um, which was known obviously for metal bashing at the time. The car industry is all from Birmingham, really. Right. And around there, it was actually situated in a jewellery quarter mm. where pretty much all of the country's jewellery was produced gold, silver, and, and everything. So, a variety of skills, really, from soldering to smelting to painting, all of that was all in that sort of mm. location. Mm. There's a couple of world wars, only small little things, obviously, but uh, the factories were the common day to make all the munitions then for the ammunition track for both world wars, actually. Mm. So mm. the production was stopped and started again. And the factory was actually heavily bombed in the second world. Right, yeah. Yeah, so they went through some real, real tough times, but then after the world war, resurrected products and um, they produced things like glass kettles again mm. back in the 50s, mm. which was like, wow. You know, it really wasn't, and most of the products were actually made out of that, that same unit in Birmingham. It continued to do so. So, yeah, for me, I was building furniture in, in the Midlands. I saw an advert for a, a job in the Evening Mail, mm -hmm. um, it was about 20 miles away. It's this company called Swan. I thought, okay, so um, I stopped building furniture and they gave me the job for that, which was right. sort of sales office, it's assistant really, marketing, sales. So, the title was sales executive and then become marketing executive mm. back in the day mm. that was 1986 right so that was uh 34 years ago <laughs> quite, yeah. A while. Yeah. quite a while yeah quite a while so yeah a long long time ago i think well before you were born yeah. <laughs> anyway yeah we're moving on <laughs> so for us it, for me it was like so exciting in, in those days it was a complete new venture but it was an institution there were 2,000 people that worked in that site Mm. They produced two million kettles. Mm. It was very, very um, old, traditional metal bashing shop floor, and then you'd mix that with the the executive offices that were there on the premises, and that was very suit and tie, very structured. Mm. Director's dining room. Mm. They'd have their own silver cutlery. Pot, everything stuff for the director's lunch. Mm. All the directors would sit around a bigger table than this, and all walnuts and everything. Right. None of them would sit down until the the chairman came in, mm. and this was every day. Yeah, this was every day. You know, then lunch would be served from the from the canteen yeah. uh, up to them, and then they'd be back to work at two o'clock. So, my job, if you like, was working for the sales director, a guy called Garth Aldridge, and he's a lovely guy. And he said, "Right, okay, Rob, I just need you to help." There was no fax machines then. Mm. I think they just started with telex machines. Mm. The odd computer was knocking around, but everything was manual. Mm. Everything was, and we had archives and rooms for papers and, and all the rest of it. So my job was to assist the sales guys that are based there and go and get make samples. Mm. So when we had a new colour or new kettle, I have to go down mm. to the shop floor, chat to Mavis or in one case June, or that's you know, yeah. uh, and say, June, I need this kettle and this shape and this paint finish and this handle, and, yeah. and we sort of make those things happen really bring them back to the sales guys and then drive them to the photographers, which is very structured in those days and mm -hmm. get this piece for artwork and literature and, and, and just a run around, but learn so much really mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. in those days, which mm -hmm. was, which was a great 
a great introduction and I very soon became what we call trade show time. So yeah. trade show is very much as we touched on earlier on, mm. the forerunner to the EFAs and all that. So we used to have in the space of two months, 32 trade shows in two months. Yes. Yeah. And they're like distributors trade shows. Yeah. You know, I made a couple of notes about some of the retailers that but, but the distributors are equally people like HI Distribution, Hamilton's, BDC, mm. Team Dale, Lightning. A, a lot of re readers will know these guys and remember people yeah. from those days. Yeah, yeah. Pact International, Grey Watts, Clyde Factors. So these guys will all have their own reps that are called on all the independent guys, mm. but, which are now obviously more CIH and Euronics. But yeah. they go and knock on the door and, and sell brands. So mm. once a year, like, every other brand we'd have opportunity to show our new products showcase them yeah yeah so you should set up these trade show stands and there'll be people there uh, from russell hobbs and morphe riches in fact mm -hmm. that's where i met paul simpson who's uh, my business partner with all of this mm -hmm. and that's you going back to probably 1988 yeah. 89 yeah, sort yeah. of time and um he'd be working for morphe richards so i'd be working for swan we were young guys with a lot of old suits doing traditional and we'd sort of okay we'd set the stand up and then we'd probably go to the pub and then mm. carry on but pretty soon the guys would come and help us come and speak to the customers mm. and speak mm. to the retailers and see the, the distributors and their customers and get to know those guys so doing that 30 odd times yes. in um, a very short period of time very quickly you get to know pretty much everybody in the industry yeah. at a very yeah. ground floor level yeah. which is great and yeah, yeah. you yeah. know I think the, the one thing we sort of miss as an industry now that we had then was just fun mm. it was fun mm. it was hard work yeah, it, yeah but it was fun you know you pack up your show and you move it somewhere in aberdeen somewhere in london somewhere in manchester and pack the stuff in the car and off you go mm. to the next mm. one so but yeah but it's interesting days i get promoted at that point from a to sales side of things yeah, yeah. um and that that for me that was quite daunting but Go putting the suit on and, and sit driving to customers, sitting yeah. in front of the independents. And yeah, yeah. Again, I was lucky enough to know a lot about the products mm. because I hope some of the samples been made in the mm. office. Mm. I knew mm. what was used to make what product and uh, what, how, what what it took to, to paint products and things. So I always had quite a passion for it. Really, yeah. I really enjoyed it, and it's, it's it's all quite new. Yeah. Do you mind if I just um, sort of jump in about the, yes. the you know the trade shows? Obviously, you know few back then and you said about moving literally sort of packing one down moving it to somewhere else I mean why why do you think there are less now more considerably sort of less now what was it about that time it, it was a sheer the volume show? of, of retailers it's a combination of trade shows and almost staff training shows right. so if again I, I, I did and I'll give you this but it's a history of notes this is like a, a graveyard of some of the retailers this is not independence but if you start just chatting through these so Trade shows used to be held by distributors. They used to deal mm. with small and medium sized mm. customers. Mm. Small and medium sized customers would be electricity boards and people like that. So if you think electricity boards, people like MEB, East Midlands Electricity Board, Yorkshire mm. Electricity Board, mm. Manweb, Norweb, London Electricity Board, Hydro, Scottish Power, Southeastern Electricity Board, Southern Electricity Board. And each one of these would have somewhere between 100 and 300, 400 shops. Each right. one. Each yeah. one. Yeah. So, We'd be there chatting to their staff or whatever, the mm. distributors who are holding the trade shows. So these, the, the electricity board customers would be, so you go to Hamilton's trade show, which would be in Old Trafford. It's their showcase of the year. And, and, and their, their royalty, their big customers would be Midlands Electricity, East right. Midlands Electricity. Yeah. Now, so they'd come along like royalty and we'd present them. So when there's no electricity boards, the distributors, didn't really have major customers. Yeah, so yeah. slowly, as, as mentioned, distributors, mm. Hamilton's, HR distribution, Team Dell, BDC, they're, they're not, they don't exist anymore. Mm. Mm. Yes, the uh, distributors like Stern and New In Air and City Electrical Factors, right. yeah. but they're more plugs and sockets and things like that. And the reason is there's no margin. Mm. The, the margin, you know, in those days when I chatted about 19, 86 and, and things products were made in the uk mm. during this sort of tight evolution what was happening manufacturing was closing down yeah 
in, in all around that, that sort of time. So products are then being made in China and certain brands would be quick off the mark to go and do that. Mm. Um, certain products were based in fact Panasonic, for instance, when mm. they launched bread makers, were already there, you know. Yeah. But companies like Russell Hobbs, Morphe Richards, um, Glyndon Lakes and, 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 and so on, had to close factories down. Right. So it's, yeah, it's a strange sort of time. So for me, it's been quite a formative few years, three or four years. Yeah, and, and yeah. Unfortunately, the distributors are not there mm. anymore mm. because there's not enough margin for a manufacturer, a distributor, and the retail. All those margins yeah, to sell yeah, to the consumer, yeah, it just, just yeah. it, it, it was it was diminishing because mm, mm. Um, I think in 1972, crazy fact, average selling price of a kettle was twenty two pounds. Mm. The average selling price of a kettle now would be, I'm guessing, fifteen, sixteen pounds, mm, mm. maybe twenty at best. That's 1972. Yeah, yeah. I, I can I can guarantee your house would be worth a lot more than it is not it was in 1972. Now, <laughs> you know, so it's all quite relative. Is it? We have a this industry has a a great well, how to say knack of just letting price erosion yeah, yeah, <laughs> take over yeah, TVs. You know, so yeah, they, yeah. They, they cost the TVs. You, you guys must see it. Yeah, it, it's yeah. just frightening. You know. Yeah, we've heard sort of, you know, retailers trying to sell TVs, you know, using that example is, is a perfect example. Um, the margins just, they just, they, you know, they, they're just not there really. Um, and a lot of retailers that we speak to are sort of moving into kind of custom installation yeah. and, and sort of, you know, really trying to do the TV, but, you know, offer more of a package yeah. just to simply sort of make a bit more. And I think, I think well, in those days we're having some fun. I would, we, explain a little bit later in different markets, but the, an old sage, an old customer of ours, an old friend from South Africa, he's very early days into sourcing. Mm. And I remember sitting with him in uh, Guangzhou railway station after doing two and a half weeks trekking around China. Yeah, I'm going back 20 years mm. and he sits mm. there and he said, look, in Starbucks, it's just the first Starbucks, I think, in China. Mm. We sit there and he said, we're in the wrong business. Mm. So what do you mean? It's great. He said, he said, look at that guy over there. I said, well, okay. He goes to the counter and he says, I have a coffee. He have a coffee. And he, that coffee's about $4. Mm. Uh, and he goes and he drinks his coffee, jumps on the train, and by the time he gets to the train to Hong Kong, he probably want another coffee maker. He said, so we have to go to the back end of China to find factories that produce products that don't have kids in, mm. all the legislation that produce a kettle with an element and a box and a package and the instructions produced, then packed in the container, shipped to a port, then shipped across to the UK or South Africa or wherever. And then what we have to do is take it off there, put it in our warehouse. Then we have to deliver it to a retail mm. or supermarket mm. or whatever. Mm. And then the supermarket will want to sell it at £9.99. It probably yeah. gives you £4 for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's exactly we're in the wrong business. And I think it's just summed it up quite well with that. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So the whole the whole industry has, has moved that way, but again, we, we need to move with the times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so for me, going back to those days, and that's the question: yeah. why there aren't any trade shows? There's not any margin anymore, unfortunately. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a great shame, and and when you look at all those retailers, just just the electricity boards, as well as department stores and Lewis's, Alders, as mm. Fraser Devlin's mm. in trouble now, Bales, as we've seen yeah. more recently. And you know, people like Radio Rentals, Rumbelows, Comet, Harris Queensway, uh, Index, Woolworths, mm. Powerhouse, they just don't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they just don't exist. So the, the distributors run out of customers to sell products to yeah. uh, and make any margin. So unfortunately, that whole sort of section of the industry really is mm. a bit. Mm. Should I share? What, um... What you know, what, what do you think that sort of means for the kind of independent electrical retailer you know today? When when names you know big names like that are struggling to to survive and they're sort of confined to you know the history books as it yeah. were. What um what you know what do you, what do you think that sort of means for for the indies today? And, and sort I of think it's it's but I mean as we said earlier, every sort of change and downturn creates another opportunity. That yeah. it was really the start from the demise of distributors. Really was the um, sort of acceleration of the buying groups, CIH, Euronics, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. AIS, um, and, and, and these guys like that. And mm. that's how they they look at, a, like we do in the little way, 
together the stronger yeah. you know a bit of buying power a bit of coordination yeah, and, yeah. and things and i think that that really did sort of was the, the evolution of the start of those guys they replaced the the distributors themselves so that they, they'd make their own profit centers yeah. from a euronics and but offer a good service yeah you know, to yeah, consumers. yeah i think that's what effectively happened because possibly why some of the independents are still here mm, mm. and yet some of the names like Comet and Wolves are not, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah that, that would be my, my sort of comment on that one. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, again, it, it evolves and, and it, not that it just evolved from a retail side, it evolved in the brand side. And so, so it's all for us at Swan 1989, early 1990, we were, Swan was acquired by Mulex. Mm -hmm. uh, Mulex was a huge French brand. 33 factories in the north of France. Right. Um, and it was amalgamation, two brands, Mulex and Swan, put together. And for me, it's quite a sad time. But again, one door opens and the one closes because mm. apart from myself and two others, the whole sales force made with them. Right. Which is a great show. Yeah. But to the French guys' credit, they invested hugely in the factory. They, they wanted to keep manufacturing in Europe and in the yeah, UK, yeah, yeah. Uh, strongly sponsored by the French government. Um, right. you know, so so that went on, it was interesting a few times. For me, I got promoted, ended up running the sales force for Moonlex and Swan. Mm. Uh, a, a later acquisition, very, uh, I think in 92, 93, they acquired Krups, mm -hmm. another huge brand. Mm -hmm. So it came Moonlex, Swan and Krups, um, which, which ran on and for me created great opportunity run this house was about 150 million turnover at the time right. for, as a young guy really yeah. I, was, I don't know it was about 28 29 whatever yeah, yeah. it's quite yeah uh, daunting fun times as i say but but busy times yeah yeah and um so that that sort of evolved and and those groups did well but unfortunately because of the insistence on keeping manufacturing honorable again um, most of the competition were going to China to produce the goods. So, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit. It's a bit of a shame. I, I got a bit fed up with it in the end. But fed up with the French, not in a on a personal level, but they were trying to consolidate manufacturing. So, yeah. for instance, in the UK, we're quite strange here. Mm. We like two and four size toasters, but mm. they only want long stock ones. Right. That we wanted square deep fat fryers. They wanted round ones, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they wanted everything white. And yet for us, Swan was uh, one of the innovations that Swan sort of really pushed through in the late 80s, 90s was coordination. Mm. It was, Swan were the first uh, brand to have a matching kettle toaster source for microwave. Mm. And that's, I mean, you can see around, that's what's mm. really, our heritage continued on today. So yeah, yeah. Um, it was quite, our proposition was quite unique. And it's funny that it was sat in Stoke, but, and it's funny you chat with the taxi driver, but we come up and one thing Stoke was really famous for was pottery and coordination. Mm -hmm. So brands like um, Wedgwood, Royal Daltons, but had all this matching plates and cups and yeah. saucers yeah. and fine bone china. And there are other, there are other um, brands such as Johnson's that are very famous for brands like Eternal Bow. Um, Eternal Bow was a collection, you, I'm sure your nan's got some somewhere, but it's uh, on cups and saucers and mm. plates and yeah. crockery so we matched that with kettles and toasters and it was it was a massive success but the french didn't get it right <laughs> they just wanted white products and yeah, yeah. Get it. so it's, it's a quirk for the uk market you know it never really did get to europe in terms of coordinating patterns mm. but it was huge here mm. absolutely mm. huge so in those days swan were in some cases, up to thirty percent market share in some right. of these pattern products. Yeah, yeah. You know, kettles and toasters were well in excess. Yeah. Well. So for us, in, back in those days, they're innovative in different ways as well. When I first joined. They're actually the first football shirt sponsor. Right. The very first, first division at the time, not Premiership, but the very first sponsor was Swan. Yeah, yeah. West oh, Bromwich Albion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A pub quiz question. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's, there's links, and there's always Swan had an ability to had value for money products and they always connected with their audience really mm -hmm. and that was early days of sort of doing that which was right. which was good really yeah yeah, it was good. yeah. And, you know it's um and it was back in the day to be fair to them west bromwich i think finished third in the league it was brian robson 
the England captain, mm. you know, Cyril Regis, Laurie. So it wasn't this wasn't a low low mm. profile thing. This mm. was really, mm. really high profile mm. thing. So so they they're always sort of looking at different ways to innovate and, and colours. But yeah. I was getting equally frustrated because of the the, the as a sales a national sales manager when your products are not quite competitive enough and, mm. and the, the factory don't really want to make the products that your customers want to buy mm. it mm. was a frustrating time so right. uh, for me I, I think it was 1994-95 I left to go and set up my own company importing products out of Taiwan right. frying pans kettles and toasters for the likes of um, helping Asda's um, little bit with a co-op TJ Hughes and these guys B and M actually in the early days mm, um, mm. for their own branded or non-branded products. Mm. But my problem is I was doing that out of my back bedroom, so right. um, cash flow was interesting. <laughs> so one minute I'd have a lot of money in the bank, yeah. the next minute I'd have no money in the bank and not been able to pay the mortgage for three or four months at a time. And right. so and this is one too happy to yeah, be fair. Yeah. So, but I'd been approached and the guy I mentioned earlier, Paul Simpson. Um, Gary Sharp, Phil Green, we were in Morphe Richards at the time, yeah. and they'd offered me the job a couple of times. I thought I best go and do this really because mm. divorce mm. is expensive. <laughs> so, mm. so I left. I left. Uh, left doing that and, and went to work with those guys. Mm. And uh, as mm. I say, we had a fantastic few years at Morphe. It was thirty million pounds turnover when I joined, um, and between Paul and Gary, myself, and Phil, we, we took it to one hundred and thirty. Right. Became number one brand. Uh, over that period and uh, I hate to say it it was at the demise of Swan really because we right. we really put together a range of coordinated appliances mm. um, we, we we really picked off all of the, the listings and it was mm. the demise really of, of Moonlight Swan um, right so that's I had a great year five six years at Morphe Richards with those guys again fun uh, part of Glen Vimplex grew uh, almost like a a new family for me. It was, it was, a, it was a great, a great bunch, great yeah, time. Yeah. Um, and we were really successful. Mm, really mm, successful. Mm. Um, big customers back in those days, the mail order customers played a huge part in it because it's really the, the forerunner to the internet that people like Barry yeah. and everything now and yeah, on the yeah. page, uh, on the printed page, you could make a matching kettle, toaster, microwave mm. look really, really good. Yeah, yeah. And that was really a heartland for both Swan and for, for Morphe, to be fair customer base, big household names like Littlewoods and um, it was pre-runners to shop like Littlewoods, Grattan, right. GUS, Case yeah. Catalog, all these guys, yeah. uh, Studio Cards and big, big, big businesses still are to yeah. this day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we did, we did that, myself and Paul did that for five or six years, it was a great time and then in my, our infinite wisdom we said okay we'll stop this and we're going still quite entre entrepreneurial really. We went back um, to pick up what was the remnants of the old Swan factory. Mm. So myself and Paul, fire, we were part of a, a group that formed a company called Signet, as in Baby Swan, C U I G N E T, and and Moonlex was still running those times at the, the old Swan factory we were based out of. Mm. So we went to work there. We had ninety six employees. We weren't accountants, we weren't production guys, <laughs> we were sales guys really, mm, but mm. We, we did quite well. I mean, we were selling two million elements to the Moonlex group still. Uh, we are producing the famous teas made out of the factory. Right. And our, our, our love affair with a particular product called the tea urn, which you'll see over your right shoulder mm. there, the top the stainless steel thing there, the Swan brand did for oh, yeah, the tea urn. Yeah. So that was a really strong part of our heritage. Mm. Um, so we are producing those and we did really quite well. Unfortunately, though, the, the Mulex Swan business did continue to demise in the UK, and Mulex, because of products not being so competitive, mm. uh, fell into worldwide liquidation in the year 2000. Um, so that formed Seb Group, basically. Right. So what happened, Mulex and Krupp's brands were sold to t mm -hmm. became became the Seb Group, that, that's what really started their group. And the Swan brand was sold to Littlewoods, my mm. order. Mm. Again, purely for the strength of coordinated products right. um, in their catalogs at the time and they had a brand called Index which was pretty much um, a smaller version of Argos right so it, Swan became a house brand for those guys 
So, but we, we continued batting on. We, we had, uh, as I say, the, the Signet brand, mm-hmm. and as in Baby Swan, mm-hmm. we continued making our T-Earns. We had great success with these T-Earns. Mm-hmm. Um, we turned our attentions back to the, the Blade of the Inflex group. They have a brand called Burke of, uh, of all this, and we mm-hmm. sort of went to head mm-hmm. with those guys. Right. And we did really well. We supplied the Hong Kong government T-Earns. We supplied them into the Middle East, a lot into the, the catering side of business in, in the UK. And it went, but unfortunately, what we didn't realise was um, we still had these 96 employees and there wasn't the demand for elements and teas made because the Swan Group had sort of disappeared, dissipated. Mm-hmm. So we continued on doing quite well. We picked up own label brands for for GUS and Index and these guys. But we went to work. I went to work one Thursday morning and unfortunately the financial director, the guy Bob, was lying out on the path. I've come running down the road to see if he's okay and to me and the postman and... He's completely panicked. We thought um, he's a big guy. He's got a history of heart problems. He's mm. uh, had a heart attack, and they said, "No, he actually he couldn't face the demise of the company. He'd thrown himself off the top of the building." Oh. 47, yeah, nice. two young kids, one yeah. ten, one twelve. So it was me and the postman trying to revive him. And mm. Mm. So then we got thrown into a real a tough, tough situation, mm. and then mm. we had to put the company into what was left. It the banks put me in charge. Right. And I'm no accountant, and right. which okay, fine. So we uh, we had the it's probably our saddest time in the world. Yeah, actually, had to stand yeah. up and make 96 people with average service 22 years with them. Mm. You know, they knew we, we had you know we were doing our absolute best to do it, and it's it was a real great shame. It's the toughest toughest time. We 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 got the administration of the day before Christmas Eve. I made them redundant the day before Christmas Eve. It was awful. We had Christmas Day off, and mm. we put together and. Uh, an offer to buy the tooling and the remnants of the Signet business back, and mm. um, our friend, friend Sloan Dimplex come and quadrupled our offer, right. took us out, right. and took it that, that Signet brand still exists within the Glen Dimplex, yeah. Um, organization now yeah, still yeah. runs, yeah. Um, so myself and Paul just ourselves down. We took I think 15 16 employees, we took we retooled, we made some of our own products in Wolverhampton, right. we found the factory that was making um. Chimneys for caravans, mm. stainless steel tubes. So we put a top and the bottom in them. I'm sure there's technical. <laughs> <laughs> we did that, and we kept we kept 15 jobs going, and and continued on with the tea and still did okay. And we we knew we needed some other products. So mm. around the year 2000, it was just before 2002, so we met David actually. Mm. In our wisdom, we decided to go across, and we thought, what can we sell with these tea to you know to catering people, corner shops, and we had yeah. this. This idea of a thing, this type of product, and it was a boy's toy. So we put an England badge on it. Mm. We tied up with Carlsberg, and we created the England beer fridge. That was and that, that went really quite huge. Two thousand and two was the World Cup in Japan, South right. Korea. Yeah, yeah. We we were unloading these things ourselves in containers. They will remember it. Um, we found David up in an office as a as a junior working with a team of people up there, and. Very quickly, he's enthusiastic. So we got unpacking beers and drinking, drinking beers yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> unloading containers at all stupid hours. And we got this yeah. into the of Comet and Powerhouse and these guys and, right. and created quite a good business quite quickly. Really, that that was sold on to to the BBC guys and right. and we we continued on. So we had an opportunity to have a discussion with the guys. Princess, it's a, it's a Dutch brand really, mm. it's around in the background, but it wasn't yeah. really, there's some real quite innovative products there. Mm. So we, we tied up with those guys, but we still had TNs, we had our TNs go, we were making in Wolverhampton. Um, unfortunately, the, the quality from UK made products and, and the continuity wasn't always great. But mm. So continue on with Princess and, and working, but in 2000, it was actually 2006, I um, just had a quick look before you come in. I called the guys at Littlewoods. Mm. I said, "Look, um, I've got an opportunity for you." So they said, "Okay, what's that?" I said, "Well, you've got Swan Brand. Mm. Yes, would you license it to us for turns and Glass Frontier Fridges?" And they said, "Well, uh, to be fair to them, a guy called Ian Jones." So I said, "Well, great, it's additional revenue for us, and, mm. and why? Why not?" So they continued to run the Swan as a house brand, and we in two thousand and six we licensed this thing for for turns. Right, uh, and we did really, really well. And they, they uh, shopped at Littlewoods in tandem with this, had uh, had a few changes themselves. But they they'd actually taken the Swan brand 
and, and really driven it quite well. Actually, to this day, still sell 26 million pounds worth of Swan brand new products. Mm. So they would actually introduced Swan into MDA, big boxes, yeah. fridges and freezers. Yeah, yeah. And that was a new, to be fair, that's totally credit to them that they had a good supply base and a good quality team and, and yeah. they really yeah. did. And they, they actually, in latter days, helped us develop that side. So um, we, we, we did licensing, we formed Swan products in 2009. Um, we tied up with, uh, it, we're still in Stoke Paul, lives in Wilms, I live in Tamworth, so it's, it literally is, it's in the middle mm. and it's and it's great for distribution, um, for warehousing, it's, it's it's good value as well. So we tied up with the guys from RKW, he's a friend of ours, he's an old, he's a distributor still in the interest now, mm. Rob Sutton, mm. and we said, look, we've got an opportunity, we've got a license for Swan Brand, um, would he do the distribution to some of the smaller guys mm. and we pick up? Right, so first thing we did really was get back out to the Far East and I went to find the Tees Made Tooling and we relaunched the tooling and we got a real good support from John Lewis actually. Right. We relaunched the Swan Tees Made with John Lewis as, mm -hmm. and, and we, we had a, a really great sort of relaunch we step into Swan. And our problem was we were hands tied behind our back in terms of product development. We had to mm -hmm. go to China and, and buy products from the shelf. So. Again, David was heavily involved, but we tried to become innovative. So one of the first ranges we put together, copy the product program at the time, come down with me. Mm. I don't know if you've seen it, but mm -hmm. they, they had to make a starter and the main course and a dessert. And it's all about cooking. So, yeah. we, so we created a product like soup makers and things that would make a starter and mm -hmm. grills and things that would make a main course. Yeah, yeah. Ice cream makers for a dessert mm. and theme. And that was again supported by John Lewis and the guys. And it helped us formulate a story yeah. and, and but what we learned quite quickly is and it continues on but you you actually interacting with consumers mm. and customers and it, mm. and you have to bring this story to life and, yeah. and that's yeah. that's what I think it was the next generation for us. Uh, from following on from that we um, we linked in with Ferncom. Yeah. Which is a big thing with Fern for us. Mm. We mm. we did a license deal with Fern and uh, which was one of the best things, one of the worst things we've done because of trying to create a new firm brand on the appliances was very, very difficult. Mm. Absolutely one of, if not the best things we've done because that opened us to a, a, a social media digital following of 8.2 yeah. million <laughs> social media followers. Yeah, yeah, so it yeah. gave us a whole new audience really. When, um, sorry, when was the firm cotton um, thing? We did it or in, that in after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 2016? 15, 15, 15, 15 20, 15. 16. Yeah, yeah. Finished in 18. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, so that, that spurred a whole new range. It's allowed mm -hmm. us to then get back into the collectability of products. In, yeah. in, in the meantime, we've learned from the, 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 the benefits of what Littlewoods have done with major appliances. So it's spurred the ranges, the retro range and, and various things we've put together. We, mm. Mm. We, we share some tooling with some French partners on, on this. They run it in France. Right. Their company's called Thompson, actually. Mm. Uh, they run the Thompson license in France and Schneider and those guys. So mm. uh, very much of the view of together with Stronger, we share some tooling with those guys. Yeah, yeah. And we launched Retro, we launched Fern. With real great interest, real great success. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but we, each time we, the brand was still under license and, the, and it's, Went, after asking the question many times, I went to the guys at Littlewoods and said, look, we'd like to buy this one brand. Mm. And they listened. And uh, so after all the journey in 2017, we put together a deal and, and we bought back this one brand. Mm. So myself and Paul, and obviously helped with banks and things. So, um, so which, which was great for us because it, it actually put the future back into our hands yeah as opposed to just be a license which could just change and, and all of that and and we we put together a team of people here really to, to drive that so when you add in the ingredients of the historical sort of things of the good bits and the bad bits go back there's the innovation through mm. swan in the mm. first place mm. then you looked at in terms of the collectability and the coordination bit look at the strength of what the towards of they were looking after the brand at the time with MDA. Yeah. They put that into the mix. Then we put together the social media collectability, interesting, you know, and the strap lines. We 
you can't take credit for it really it's one design for life was sort of born really yeah and that's that's yeah. how it all comes together and and that's how it works it's come to the design for life for us is sort of a combination of the journey so far mm. so so we, we so we, we took the brand and we, we we do license the brand back to shop direct now they still do in excess of 26 million pounds with the swan branded products which right we help them with their sourcing coordination color matching um representation on, on all of their websites and the platforms they actually have very now which is very it, it, it's mm. what, well i think it's the largest mail order company in europe still over right. three billion turnover so yeah, yeah, still yeah. significant and a great yeah. vehicle and supporter of swan so um so that, that's been good we, we, we've really continued that on and because of the um the Moonlex association previously mm. i knew this various opportunities in different markets so we resurrected the brand registrations in the states we mm. now sell into home depot in the states and all the coordinated range which is quite groundbreaking for those right. in fact we probably should show you some of those mm. um mm. images actually dave on, on that. Stuff, right? yeah i think so cool. yeah just just because it, it's quite brave of those to put a swan brand uh into 300 stores mm. Mm. with the coordinated appliances which is at the market. so right. so we, we launched that in the states and canada now into South Africa, we, we supply it into Korea. Um, we're just about to launch in Australia on a small scale. So we're just trying to diversify a little bit away a, a bit from the UK as well yeah, because yeah, we've got yeah. a great brand story. You know, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, so for so for us that the whole that sorry for the long drawn no, no, history. That's all right, no, brother. It gives you a yeah. Really, we, we've been through some had some great times. It, but times that you couldn't imagine how bad they are. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. there's a few norms and things, and yeah. all of that. It's just so sad. Yeah. But it, yeah. what it does do is make us a couple of things independent. Mm. We don't depend on anybody now because mm. we're, if, we're all so much very determined. Yeah. We really oh, do. Yeah. The passion that comes through with all of that, you know, and from all the team here, I've got to say one of the best things about being in Stoke is the team of people are great. Mm. They are, you mm. know, they. They don't expect anything for nothing. Mm. They come and put a shift in and really we've got a small team of 20 people there, but yeah. customer service and, and the guys from marketing side, sales, sales, sales office, mm. really all do have the same ethos as we do. You know, mm. we're, mm. we're proud of what we do. So Yeah. Well no, I mean, you know, when when the the, the history of the company kind of you know, sort of develops through the stages, you know, sort of that um, you know, that you've been through, I suppose it's not just a case of what we you know. We bought the brand in X year, and now here we are. It, yeah. it, it's all kind of yeah. stages that have followed on from each other. So yeah. you know, it's um, going right back to sort of the beginning. It is it's natural to, evolution and that. to go through. Yeah. yeah. So, no, that's, so um, I think when we put the combination together and what we sort of learn what to do, learn what not to do over over recent years. But, yeah. Um, there's we we've got a great opportunity. <clears> and I, I feel we are. David's put together a great sort of platform for us to do social media with it speak to our consumers now yeah so speaking yeah. directly to consumers but we're trying to do it in a way that we people that support us will support them so we, we yes we did some tv advertising vr tv but we're really driving the the sales to to the retailers that support us i mean dixon's were, were excellent yeah the support and mm. store with floor care for instance which has been a great success um we use our platforms to Push um, own label designs for like a very swan branded, but mm. just driving mm. that. Even in an independent level, we will put together targeted social media campaigns for independents or work with her on the other white put it together. And we're strong with a Facebook page, and mm. which I'm linking mm. there because one of the things that we have done is invested heavily into the the photography, the media, the, the videos, the training yeah. videos, yeah, and all yeah. that. All yeah. that's available online, mm. and we get a million people visit our website because of all this mm. people mm. it's fun so we don't tell too much on our website but we, we like to point them in the direction of people that support it. yeah of course yeah so um, we look at the, the we read you through all these names of people that are not here Lewis is oldest has Fraser mm. Comet Index well obviously then the, the new boys on the block are AO and Amazon mm. Mm. we get great support from AO and, and, and Amazon to be fair yeah, you know yeah. so they support us and we try and support them with with content and uh, we invest heavily in stock here you know we, we do a lot of drop ship from here and mm. um, so which we, we're trying to remove some of the 
our boss would say excuses, but remove some of the risks uh, involved for some of the retailers now. Mm, mm. We, we can help them sell products on their own websites. We can deliver them direct to them, yeah. so the consumers, they don't have to sell them and stock them and pick them up and put them down. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So just trying to evolve in a, in a way. And, and, and one of the things we've managed to do, part by accident, but part by design, when we first involved in license in 2009, we did some work on the demographic of our consumer right. with the teas made and yeah, it yeah. was 50 plus. Right. We're now sitting at 25 to 34, right. which is a hell of a drop on, and actually getting younger. So actually speaking, it's not just today's consumers, but tomorrow. I mean, for us, you know, we sit in the office and all we've got to do is open the door, mm. shout out to the team. What do you think about this? Because mm. they're our target audience, yeah. you know. But it, do you like this colour? Do you like that colour? Yeah. We, we, our market research is sitting outside our ah. door, so mm. it's, it's really good from that from that point of view. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we all sort of chip in with an idea of colours and things. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, what are what are some of your sort of latest um, sort of product creations? Okay. But but there's there's a couple of different areas. Again, massive strength of ours is coordination. We're actually yeah. the only strange to even say this but we are the only brand in the world in the world that coordinates mda with kettles and toasters and microwaves mm. and saucepans housewares pots and pans smeg do a great job obviously with their refrigeration sda but they don't have microwaves they don't have housewares. yeah so we from a collectability point of view for people setting up homes and and from that we have some great quality collectible product yeah so the, the probably the, not probably the best lane range at the moment we've got is the Nordic range. I yeah, that, yeah. I'll, I'll get Dave to send you some proper imagery of that. But mm. the Nordic is is a soft touch feel with a wooden handle, yeah. contemporary style, contemporary design, and, mm. and mm. really has taken off like a storm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Grey is a cool colour, but it, we were early into grey, and, and it really is. It, every time we get this in, it's selling out. Yeah, yeah. It really, it really has surprised us. There's um. Yeah, there's something about it. Me and David were, were, were speaking before, I think, and uh, I came in here, David popped out, and I, I, just, I went over there. The first thing I wanted to do is just sort of touch the... That's the, the, uh, the stroke the, the microwave. microwave. Yeah, <laughs> the stroke the microwave. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just just like, yeah no one was around. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Um, Jack, you're getting it's as just, bad as I'm. <laughs> it's just, it, it kind of just makes you want to do it because it's yeah. got that look about it. There's like the matte okay. finish. Uh, is, is, is really cool. That's so. what we're, we're so keen to get it installed. To be fair to Dixon's, they don't have the microwaves installed, but right. well, as soon as we put the kettles and toasters installed, it is quite touchy feely. Yeah. Um, so that's our newest best selling range at the moment, I'd, right. I'd, I'd say. Yeah. And um, we've got a Gatsby range, which is a bit more yes. bling, yeah. which is the gold and the black that we got. That's through Berry. And, and the other big development for us has, has been the, sorry, it's been floor care. Mm. The floor care range is um it's not always a product that's been synonymous with swan but the, the eureka swan tie-in is with a, a huge chinese manufacturer eureka is a brand in the states mm. uh, it's very similar to swan a very old brand similar sort of age and it, it wouldn't really carry in the so but right. it, it's it's actually from the largest man appliance manufacturer in the world that supports us to give us that exclusively so mm. because of the dual branding we did with firm Actually, it's also not a great opportunity for us. It's a real coup that those products. It's an old Panasonic factory they purchased in the in the north of China, and it's fun. It's the best factory I've ever been to. I've been to quite a lot, and, and uh, it really is fantastic. So the quality is good, and, and using the new sort of routes to market, really, we've linked in with some social media influencers. The young lad, he's only fifteen. Yeah. It's probably yeah. worth a mention. The, yeah. the back mat's really nice, lads. Nice family, and uh, uh, he. By his own admission, he's he probably, he didn't call it quite a problem, but he's got a fascination with vacuum cleaners at 15, it's a bit strange, but yeah. even so, he's doing very, very well with it, and he's been on national TV probably every month since Christmas. Yeah. So yeah, and, and we have Lindsay Queen of Bellini, you, you see the Mrs. Hinch oh, yeah. phenomenon with all this, and it's really been, um, and to be fair to Mrs. Hinch, she decided she's featured some of our stuff completely on page, mm, you know? Right. So, you can have these guys on side with you and work with you, but we're getting noticed in that arena, you know. Mm, so, yeah. and, and the floor care products are fabulous. So, they're probably two stars of the show at the moment, Nordic and floor care, really. Mm. Um, what, what would be your sort of plans to, you know, 
draft to you know sort of build on that and, and, and sort of drive those uh, sort of specific areas forward. I think it, it, it's key to, to speak to our customers and 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 our, our customers by that I mean our consumers to get the feedback to to see what really where the gaps are in the market. We create then um, ranges that they want. Yeah. We don't just go off to China and, and think, oh, that's a nice product to launch it. We, we put a lot of time into research, development, testing, um, and really developing products that that, that market wants, really. Um, if we ensure the quality, but we need to do the two things. We have, there's no point in having a great social media platform mm. if your product's not good enough. Yeah. So it's good quality products. Um, and value for money is not necessarily cheap. Value for money is products, you know, we're looking at things, sustainability is really key now. Mm, mm. Um, it's a huge thing that I see. Yeah, you know, yeah. We don't want to see these things in landfill. We, we're working with the factories to, it sounds a bit old fashioned, but we like people almost, certainly not to repair their industrial products, but replace them, replace certain parts that can be replaced and mm. filters and hoses and, and things like that. So yeah. sustainability, I think, that's a message that really needs to be to be pushed. I think we've got an opportunity to, to drive the, um, the the market there. I, I really do. Mm. Um, and and that audience, our younger audience now, is is really not just wanting it, but they're demanding it. Yeah. Which which is good. I think we got to drive down that, that line. So again, it's a combination of yes, having the right products that people want, and using the platform to push them. Yeah. 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 How, um, sort of going back to your point about the sort of social media and, um, well, you mentioned the back, uh, back, back mat, mat is it? Yeah. Um, what, um, how would you sort of look to, you know, build on, on that sort of thing as well, sort of working uh, with people like that? I think, I think people, we're trying to reach a wider audience because there are fewer retailers to really work with. Oh. So what we're trying to do is, is create the footfall for the retailers. So if we can speak to the consumers and create a, a demand, for instance, we did um, a promotion when we launched in BSG floor care. We said to our our audience, if you like, these are just going into the DSG, have some fun, go in there, take a picture with each one, find which stores they're in, a bit of a treasure hunt. Thing. Yeah. The, the, we were giving away 10 vacuum cleaners. They're all gone within two hours. People have got off in front of the laptop, phone and whatever, run around taking pictures of things in these stores. And mm. So it's just generating a bit of interest. Yeah. So yeah. it's trying to be a bit unique. What we're trying to do is almost take the audience to the retailer because the, 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 the football is not going to the retailer. Mm. Mm. It's just driving it the, the other way around. So, so I don't, I, I, it's a changing market. This is, really is changing market mm -hmm. you know the new world retail as it were the likes of amazon ao groupon these guys mm -hmm. yeah the big businesses yeah. but we, we still need to be heard and, and we need to drive some footfall for them off yeah. yeah yeah you know tv advertising is not what it used to be yeah you know yeah. Uh, the old-fashioned press is not what it used to be so mm -hmm. to use the firm cotton thing we learned there we could take an advert in a national newspaper, mm -hmm. the biggest one would probably give us a, a, a reach of about 750,000, maybe, right. at mm -hmm. best. Fern Cotton would have a reach of 8.2 million. Mm -hmm. you know, That's just, just uh, and the yeah, stats speak for themselves. They do, and, then, and it's, a, it's, a very, um, it's a very direct and, 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 and engagement. So yeah. it's engaging with our, our, our target market, really. Yeah. And, and supporting the retailers that support us with that. Yeah, yeah. You know, if if uh, independents or buying groups or if bigger retailers want to stock our product, like Nordic, mm. we mm. try to, mm. it's encouraging to come in touch and feel it. Yeah, yeah. We'll absolutely support them with a, a bespoke social media campaign for them. Yeah, yeah. So uh, even at an independent level. Yeah, yeah. On your, um, your point of the, you know, sort of independents and the, and the you know, store retailers, obviously a lot of, uh, well, you know, the majority of, uh, of readers of, of ERT will want to sort of know about, we well, mentioned about, you know, sort of supporting the, like, the social um, sort of side of things. I suppose that's that's one aspect. But, um, you know, do you have sort of plans to sort of, um, you know, grow through the independent sort of channel? And, and we, we, we'd love to. 
we, we'd love to, mm. you know. Uh, the, the buying groups are, are, are quite supportive. They, um, yeah. they, they're, they're open to try different things. Um, we are getting a lot of inquiries direct to us. Right. Okay, they, they come into us to yeah. say, look, because they, they see things, the distributor side of things, uh, preferred distributors, RKW, those guys do a good yeah. job for us. They, they go out knocking on doors from an independence point of view. But we'd love to do more. I think there's a huge opportunity within events and floor care. Yeah. Because the change in that market, mm. uh, a lot of the bigger brands, Dyson's, Bax, G Tech, have taken to selling direct to their own consumers without yeah. the yeah. Uh, Hoover with all of the changes and everything around them. Um, well, anything that changes is, is difficult. Yeah. So Hoover are changing their thing. So for us, it's opened up a huge opportunity for independents and some of the bigger players to bolt onto what we feel is it's fantastic quality product. Yeah. Well, um, why, why do you sort of, and well, I suppose for the reasons you sort of just mentioned that with Hoover, for example, but what's about floor care and what about, I suppose, your floor care products do you think would be, I don't know, perhaps an area to sort of focus on specifically yeah. with the independent? I think so. I think so, yeah, because they're, they're excellent products and you, it, it's, it's good to come and physically use the products demonstrate them in the store yeah. uh, that that's something again that, that we're lacking mm -hmm. we welcome mm -hmm. any opportunity to do that and support that we'd support it with uh, in-store displays or demonstrators yeah. And, yeah. and various different things we've seen some good success for your own disguise especially down in the southwest for instance mm -hmm. done quite well with, mm -hmm. with floor care mm -hmm. and but it, it's it's grown i mean yeah. we launched it 12 months ago you know and we've well we've sold in excess of 25,000 pieces already, mm -hmm. and it, mm -hmm. so it's actually getting some good traction. The yeah. quality is really good. Yeah, the yeah. reviews are really good. So, yeah, it's um, it, it, it's certainly an opportunity for independence. Yes. Um, what about um, you know, new sort of product lines or new ideas, things that you might be sort of working on for, for this year? Yeah, I, I, we still very much the collections is, is really a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. There's opportunity again. We, we've got a few new collections that we'll unveil at uh, Exclusive Housewares in, in right. June. Um, it's still a good platform for us, and a lot of independents do go to that show. Yeah. Um, so there's some new product collections and ideas to, to really showcase there, yeah. really, I, I think. So we're also looking at doing a bit more in terms of MBA. Okay. I think we've created, we haven't even touched on it yet, but the, the retro range, mm. again, it's, it's, it's quite unique. Uh, yes, we, we've taken inspiration, if you like, from Smeg Style, but we know it's, it, our product is not a cheap product. Mm. That's the equivalent Smeg product will be nearly £2,000. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our product would sell for £700. Mm. Mm. So, so it, it's affordable style, you know, and to build on that with the collectability. So there, there are more ranges from that point of view and more products. I think looking at the market, there's a lot more built in, in terms of the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So a built in retro oven hob, I think is what we're looking, we, we were launching in the not too distant future. Right. Some good product that already, we've got a good distribution base of consumers that, that want this product. Mm -hmm. So to add in a built in oven hob and a few things, uh, I think that would be quite exciting. Did you identify that that was yeah, something that you sort of perhaps you felt like you needed to do? Yes, um, I think so. I think we change. wanted to, if, if the market is there for built yeah. in, yeah, yeah. independence, and having chatted to them at some of the, the road shows that we've done, it's clear the independents are focusing a lot more about kitchens. Yeah. They're, they're doing a lot more in terms of kitchen, they're almost having kitchen yeah. studios within the electrical store. So. Um, that that's a, it gives them more margin, but it also mm. really can offer more to their customers. Yeah. So it's not just selling them a fridge or a cooker. The, the recent articles in the RT, you'll bear that out. Mm. But so for us to offer them a built-in appliance would be nice, but also a complete suite of kettles, toasters, microwaves that can go with that, saucepans mm. that complement that. Yeah. So there's a yeah. good opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And kitchen specialists. Um, just wanted to pick up on, on something that's sort of like the collections thing that you mentioned um, sort of coming out later this year. Is that sort of building on sort of something you've already got? Am I allowed to sort of ask? Yeah, sure. And know, then this week we've, we've, got, we've got some retro colour, because for built-in ovens, it's 
we walk around these for some fantastic products, great yeah, technical yeah. products, really amazing, but there's no color. Right. There's, there's very little color. Mm -hmm. So to have, to build in the, the, the cream and the blue have been great successful for us. We can send you pictures mm -hmm. for those. Mm -hmm. uh, to build upon that, I think, it's, yeah, I think it's a, it's a natural progression for us. Right, yeah. Um, and obviously in terms of having these colors already, where, you know, sort of the, the whole kind of, um, I'm probably going to use more terminology myself, it sounds silly, but the kind of the pastel kind of thing. Yeah, no, it's right, sort of no, you're right. Sort of I mean, yeah, absolutely. Where, yeah. does that, where did that sort of come from? And it's obviously sort of very well, 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 Cream, it? cream has always been a, a good base color. Right. It's, it's always yeah, yeah. been a good base color for, for kitchens, whether it be farmhouse kitchens and um, obviously less so, so these days with black and white and stainless steel. Mm. But you know, most most homes still do have that colorway. You know, they had in in the home. They, yeah, they, they yeah. do the creams. So the, the pastels, we've really seen some great success with um, the green and the blue in particular. They've done really really well, and, and more recently grey right. has fitted into that sort of level. So we took inspiration. The old, the original Vespa colours actually, Vespa scooters oh, yeah. were actually the the cream and the sorry the the blue and the green that came from those. Right. Um, so that's what. But grey, obviously, um, this colour now is just so popular. Yeah. On appliances yeah. as well. Yeah. So. And we also in terms of MDA, I think a nat natural extension mm. into the Nordic range. Mm. It's, yes, it's just a mock-up that you see there and that, that, the fridge, but mm, that, mm. it's completely, the handle's not quite right and we still, it's work in progress. Mm, mm. But to add the Nordic feel to a, a freestanding product, I think that's that's a good opportunity for us as well. Yeah. Nobody else does that when, mm. once we get the, the handle and the, the touchy-feely side of things right. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think there's some interest developments and in NBA there. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. We can, um, build on the, the collections. Yeah, the retro, the retro sort of theme is, is definitely kind of one of the sort of main sort of themes of, uh, of the kitchen. And we've sort of covered that feature wise in the magazine for um, for the last sort of couple of years. So it stands the test of time. Yeah, it does. We've had yeah. it in the range for six years now, mm. um, and it still continues. It's still, even though Nordic's possibly going to outstrip it this year, it's still our best selling collection. Right. Retro. Do you think there'd just be kind of new kind of versions and new takes on the sort of rep, like the basis of the, the sort of retro theme? Um, you know, sort of like, like cause, you know, I, I look at the sort of that sort of Nordic yeah. uh, microwave and think, well, it's sort of got that kind of retro theme, but it's kind of building on it and sort of changing it. So I suppose, like, you, you know, when you, now you say it, to, um, to be fair, I think that it probably is a variation. Yeah, I mean, so you, for, you see that sort of just you know continuing. Sort of I think so, but there's there's a, there's certain things we uh, and big opportunity for us for this coming year as well. It's also coffee. Swan has always been known as a tea brand. We never talk about the teas made, right. yeah, kettles yeah. and tea urns and things. We have seen a huge, really success with the with the retro style, especially of coffee making, mm. um, and it's gone into. The, into the top three best thing espresso machines would mm. you believe this year mm. but we've added the nordic version it's exactly that it's an extension of that thing you know mm. Mm. so i think there's opportunity that's in there for sort of coffee as well um i suppose lastly really your sort of aims just generally for for this year um you know you mentioned kind of new uh collections and stuff like that but sort of in your position you know the company sort of just general plans for for this year's going forward? I think we we feel as though we've put um, Swan back onto the map from an advertising footprint. Yeah. I think we just really need to grow into that footprint now and, and really really build Swan into the brand it was when they first joined in the 80s. You know, it, yeah. we'd like to be in excess of 20% market share on these coloured ranges and things. I think this is a, a real good opportunity to do that. So yeah. you just continue to build using the building blocks of it, and also expand the overseas market okay. because yeah. you know and it's clearly there's a demand for our market, our products in the states and Canada. It's starting to work in in Korea. Mm. There's a huge mm. interest in China, right. uh, although it's a it's a very difficult market to break into, yeah. and we've got some good good sort of footballs to go into Europe as well. So right. so I think um, I'd like to be less dependent on the UK. If, I, if I'm honest, mm -hmm. and there's good opportunities to do that. Yeah.
Cool. Um, I think that's, that's, that's it good, for me, uh, I think. Uh, unless there's anything you sort of wanted to... No, support, well, just to say, thanks for coming up, to be honest. No, well, thank thanks for your support, and, and, and obviously... It's good, no? Yeah. Appreciate it. Cheers. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.